Hello, this is Dominic McGough, and for this video we're going to be looking at the Greek letter Pi, and more specifically what it means as a number in maths. Now, a lot of people know what the number Pi is to three decimal places, and how it's used, but not many people know what it actually means. And for this video we're just going to be looking at that. Now, a lot of you will already know what it means, in which case this video is not for you, so rather than feel patronized by some of the terms and things we're going to be looking at please keep in mind that there are a lot of people who don't know it and that this video is actually made for them now the Greek letter pi is used to represent the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter okay already that sounds a little obscure so we have to explore a number of those terms in order to understand what is actually meant by that definition. Now, looking at a circle, first and foremost, we have a pretty rough circle here. Now, the line I've just drawn, the perimeter of the circle, is known as its circumference. When you look at any circle, what really defines the circle is its circumference. And obviously, there are more things to describe the circle than just the shape of it and those things will go through one by one here. At the center of the circle, which is fairly obvious what it is, it's that point within a circle from which every line when drawn from the circumference is equidistant. They're all equal distances from this point to the edge. So say I draw a line from the center to there that would be the same length as a line drawn from the center to, say, there. And it doesn't really matter. Wherever we draw the line, that's known as the radius of the circle. If you can imagine the center of the circle radiating lines like a light, radiating outwards in all directions. And this one line represents the length. I could have drawn it anywhere. So that's the radius, or R. Now, if I was to draw two radii, a line passing right through the center, effectively dividing the circle into two, and that line is the diameter. Now, you can see that the diameter equals two of the radius diameter equals two times r right and it doesn't matter where you draw the diameter either as long as it passes through the center so far we've established what the circumference of a circle is the center of the circle the radius of the circle diameter. So you can think of the circle as being a cake viewed from above, or perhaps more appropriately a pie. And if you cut the pie into two to share between two people, and they both get an exact half each. The line that we drew in order to cut this pie in two represents the line that the knife would make. That's the diameter. Now, we know that the Greek letter pie equals the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. Now pi actually represents a very long number, infinitely long. 3.14159265358979323 I'm not going to go through all of them because I can't. No one can. But for our purposes and for most purposes simplified to three decimal places. The number does go on, but sometimes it's even just 3.14, because 0.1 is a small fraction of 4. It's a thousandth of the whole number. So, what is actually meant when we say that pi represents the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter? Well, first we have to look at what is meant by ratio. It's very straightforward, as are all things when fundamentals are explained properly. Um, a ratio 
is the relationship of one number to another. Now say we were talking about, well I was talking to a friend of mine who had been to a party, he said that the ratio of women to men was two to one. You might say, I don't know, there were two girls to every boy in this party. I said to him, did you manage to end up with two women? And he said, no. Yes, it wasn't that good a party. What would I know? I wasn't invited. I digress. Um, now how would he know that? Uh, unless he's uh, really sad, I suspect he was just talking rubbish. Um, but he may, he's not that sort of guy, but he may have counted everybody that there are 40 women and 20 men. Which equals two to one. Because you can see that there are half as many men as there are women. And as oh, sorry, a penguin or a crow. As any um, red blooded male would agree, it's pretty good odds. And uh, odds is appropriate because ratios are used all the time in gambling. If you're trying to establish the probability of an outcome or how much of a return you'll get on your initial wager that you make on something occurring. Now what does that mean here? As we try to understand the relationship between the circumference of a circle to its diameter. Now we know that that line there is the circumference. It's actually no coincidence that it has the word circ in it. And this line here is the diameter. And they both describe this particular circle. Now if we know what a ratio is, and you can see that if we took this out and bent it round the circle, it wouldn't travel right around the circle. Because this line is longer than this line here. This would be one, this here, would represent one of these diameters. And if we did it again, it would reach around to about there. And if we did it again, it would reach around to about there. Leaving this little bit here. I don't know if you can see that too clearly. I'll just do it again away from these labels they would have so we start using the length of the diameter to wrap around the circle and pull it out and the circle maintains its shape so we have that there same length it's meant to be anyway um, and we place it here that would reach around to about here. Then we take another one and that would reach around to about here. And then we take another one that would reach around to about here. Then we have a little space here. Now what do you think is the length of this little space here if each of these equals one metre? It could be centimetres, it could be miles, it could be inches, it could be nanometers. It doesn't matter. It just represents one unit. So we have one, two, three, and a little bit over. Now that little bit there actually represents the rest of the number here. It's actually naught point. 141.......141592653589323 and so on. Massive, massive, infinitely long. Now, is that a coincidence? No, because all circles have that relationship and it's exact. It would probably be easier if it was a perfect 3. Certainly for working a lot of things out, but it isn't. Nature has it fixed that uh, for every diameter, the circumference will equal the diameter times pi. The circumference, the length around the outside, equals the diameter times 3.141 dot dot dot. In the same way that all squares have four sides, 
That's just nature. It's just how it is.